Hi everyone, I see six people, just give me a few moments so I can make everything work. Yes, it looks that everything works. I'm using a new software today, so I'm a bit afraid, <laughs> a bit nervous. So. Thank you so much for joining. Let me know if you can see me well and if you can hear me well. You can use our chat, live chat, and please let me know. Also, let me know where you, where you're from. I would love to. I would love to see. Okay. Hello, hello Marina. Please let me know if you can hear me well, if you can see me well. Nice, thank you, Sara. Thank you. Perfect. Looks like everything is working. Okay. Thank you so much for joining. Hello, Zora. Hello, Sia Bag. Hello, Gloria. Thank you so much for joining. Perfect. Okay, thank you so much for letting me know. I think we can slowly start. <laughs> Greetings from Singapore. <laughs> Just hope. In to say hi, need to leave soon. It's 1 a.m. here. Oh, thank you so much, Julia. <laughs> I really appreciate. Uh, hello, Anna. Hello, hello, Thelma. South Africa, wow. Today, again, we have a very international audience, which is always great. Perfect. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay, for those of you who are here for the first time, maybe, <laughs> my name is Daria. I'm a professional stylist and educator. I'm the founder of the Wonder Wardrobe online course. I am passionate about having a wardrobe that makes you really excited every day and that is always ready to serve you great outfits for your daily needs. And I've noticed that the more outfits we can make with the clothes we have, the longer we end up wearing them. And this leads to us minimizing the already troubling fashion pollution. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, thank you. So happy to see you here. <laughs> okay. I've seen more people have joined the chat. So let's start. Nice. <laughs> I would like to know, first, I have a question for you. So what are the garments in your wardrobe that reduce the number of outfits you can create. So let me know in the in the chat what are those garments? What do you have in your wardrobe that is very hard to match? Let's see together if we match opinions <laughs> before I tell you my 10 garments that reduce outfit possibilities. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. <laughs> Prints, okay. Who else? Patterns. <laughs> A lot of troubles with patterns. Cropped pants. Mm hmm okay yeah if you don't have the right boots i can imagine that it's hard to 
to create a full outfit because the full outfit is everything when you have everything boots and bags and accessories and coat yeah because a lot of people they forget they think the outfit is just only a dress or a blouse and pants but we actually have a lot of other elements that we need to pay attention to okay dresses <laughs> a question mark <laughs> well uh dresses it's it's a nice uh, item yeah if you love dresses why not to have a lot of dresses then of course you can create a lot of different outfits with dresses but if you enjoy them more than two-piece outfits then why not i don't see the problem cropped blazers okay yeah valid culottes okay <laughs> A lot of different things you have in your wardrobe that you can't match. <laughs> Interesting. Peplums, big sleeves, suspenders, neon colors, jumpsuit, dresses, tails. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> okay. But if you already have these items, I want you to know that it's okay. We all have those kind of items in our wardrobe and there are uh, there are still some ways to wear them, just not as many maybe as other clothes. I will explain to you why these clothes limit your options, so your future choices don't. <laughs> and a lot of these options that I will show you today are winter oriented, as I thought it would help you save some money as well. And yes, speaking of presents, that keep on giving <laughs> starting on december 6th and ending on new year's eve i will invite you to join three events that will result in some amazing presents all i can tell you for now is that the first week involves the newsletter i put out weekly so make sure you subscribe if you want to claim that present the second week is all about Wonder Wardrobe students. If you are a student, you will love this because you will get the chance to win the coaching session where you and I will get to put the last details on your Wonder Wardrobe. During the last two weeks of December, we will plant a whole new forest together. Did you actually know that for every purchase, Wonder Wardrobe course plants 50 trees automatically? And this year I will double that so that by the end of December, we can all say we planted a forest together. And last but not least, the whole month of December up until the 2nd of January, all shipping for the Wonder Wardrobe color palettes and bento bags will be free. Okay, I see that we have some more people that joined us. Welcome, welcome everyone. Let's see what items you wrote about in the chat. We have more. My brown suede skirt. Okay. Fitted cardigan, bulky knits overall denim pants that's true actually that's not a very versatile item you can only put you can only wear it with a top underneath right and that's about it <laughs> okay a lot of a lot of options you have <laughs> for for those items that are not very good for a versatile wardrobe for a capsule wardrobe right okay now let me tell you what garments I think will reduce the number of your outfits this winter. So I'm going to share with you my screen because I prepared for you a kind of a presentation so I can show you everything with pictures and explain uh, everything so much better, more fun, I hope. <laughs> okay, let's, let's start. Let's go. Okay, 10 garments 
that reduce outfit possibilities. You know what? I forgot to turn off your comments. Let me <laughs> just uh, a few seconds. Ta -da! Okay, let's go. Okay, 10 garments that reduce outfit possibilities. Let's go. First, the first item that I think reduce outfit possibilities are tunics or long sweaters. And by long sweaters or tunics, I mean exactly that. On the picture, we have a very fashionable, very cool tunic. Like, oh my God, it's beautiful. It has a asymmetric top and a beautiful peplum. And I mean, it's super fashion. It's super beautiful. But of course, we all know and seen very basic tunics and long sweaters that cover our bottom. Yeah. So this kind of length is very, very dangerous because it's not very versatile, in my opinion. So it's not versatile because you can't wear it with any skirt. Yeah, because your vertical proportions will be disharmonious. You, with the short skirt, it's just a mess. The, you're just going to see a little bit of your skirt left, which is weird. <laughs> with a pencil skirt that is knee length, your silhouette is all broken because you look like your torso is very long. And then there is a little bit of other fabric, which is supposed to be elongating your legs but instead it just looks weird then if we get uh, wide leg trousers and put a tunic on it it's just a lot of different fabric on it even if the tunic will be just simple and have two sleeves and normal tunic yeah even even this one that doesn't have that much fabric it's still with the wide leg pants it just looks like a mess and the last pair of trousers, it doesn't work because it has a lot of volume on top. It has a belt, it has pleats. So instead of a very nice and slim silhouette, you're going to have a lot of volume around your belly. Yeah. So I don't know, not so versatile in the end. But... Of course, if you already have tunics, maybe you have summer tunics also can be uh, an option. You still can find some nice items to wear it with. Yes, yeah, so it can be straight trousers. Look, look, it looks very nice. It looks very nice, especially if they are like this, slightly cropped. Yeah. They are not too short because if you go with shorter trousers, again, your vertical silhouette is going to be a little bit disproportionate. And then you can wear it with skinny. It can be skinny jeans or it can be skinny trousers. And you can wear it with leggings. It can be simple leggings, can be leather leggings. There are a lot of different options. So if you have a tunic, you still have options, but just your options are very limited. The second item that I think that reduces your wardrobe outfit possibilities is peplum tops. Okay. Here I have a beautiful peplum top. It's beautiful. It's made out of wool. It has a very beautiful color, unusual, beautiful sleeves. Everything is beautiful. But the only thing is that this type of top looks very good only with slim and clean bottom. So when you have a lot of details, like here, like on the example with the model, we have a very complicated skirt with pleats with a different uh, asymmetric pattern, two different colors. It's just so messy. And then you don't know where to look. Yeah, because uh, everything is kind of, there's a lot of things here. <laughs> yeah. But when you wear it with something slim and very clean, like I have here 
on these examples, like a pencil skirt, and I have just straight cream uh, trousers. I think this works. Now, these are all the items that we can't match peplum top with skirts or trousers that have that should be worn with a belt that have a lot of volume that have pleats skirts that are have some details on the waist this skirt for example here has also uh, it's a wrap skirt yes yeah, so there is a little bit of volume on the front and the last pair of pants it just has a lot of volume it's a wide leg plus there are also front pleats and if you also put a peplum on top of that it's just gonna look like you have a very big belly <laughs> yeah and no one really wants that so again so if you have a peplum top this means that you can wear it but you have to match it with bottoms that are very simple very clean and mostly maybe even monochrome yeah so you don't um, disturb this uh, so you're basically your top has to be the center of attention in your outfit it's your statement item everything else has to be just supporting has to be very uh, simple okay here i also just wanted to show you another peplum top this is obviously for summer but i just wanted to show you what happens when you put a peplum top on very voluminous trousers yeah it just becomes super messy around your waistline your proportions are completely wrong vertical and uh, horizontal so you can't understand where is your hips where the hip lines so basically no no here's another example again it's just so much volume that we don't need really in that area so if you have a lot of trousers that have wide leg or have pleats maybe they are they are straight but if they have front pleats or they have a paper bag design then you will not be able to pair it with a peplum top although of course as an item it's it's a very beautiful top it, it's beautiful design and yeah just have to be very careful with it and now I just wanted to show you examples of what I like, how peplum tops look like. As I said, you have to have very simple bottom. And here we have basically straight pant, one color pant. Yeah, and all of them are slightly cropped. And then the peplum top, it stands out and it makes sense. Yeah, it gives that volume but it doesn't look like you are pregnant or have a huge belly. The third item that I think is no good for a winter capsule wardrobe is a satin skirt like this. So here we have also, I think on the picture, it's kind of like a, a little bit with the velvet, maybe the fabric. So basically what I mean by this is that uh, the skirt has a very thin fabric, very thin material. And for winter, it doesn't work because you don't have a lot of tops that can go with that. Because you can't tuck in anything in there in this skirt because it's very thin and whatever you will uh, try to put inside, it will be visible. It will... Uh, just to create also a lot of volume around your belly, uh, around your uh, bottom as well. So no good. Here, for example, if you think that maybe 
I get this skirt and I will wear it with a sweater, with my winter sweater. So this most probably what's going to happen. Usually winter sweaters, they're quite long. It's very unusual, I would say, rare that you will find quite a cropped uh, winter chunky sweater that is warm as well. Yeah, usually they are quite long, long like this. And it's fine, you can wear a, a sweater like this, with this length, with trousers very easily. Uh, you can uh, tuck it in, tuck it out, so you have a lot of options. But when you have this kind of skirt, of, first of all, what happens is that your vertical proportions also uh, get, uh, gets disturbed because it seems like your legs are much shorter when you have a long sweater like that with a midi skirt. Then also what happens is that the difference between textures is so big, so the sweater is quite, it's not like chunky sweater even, but it has material that is very thick and a skirt is very thin and together they just look a little bit silly when you put them together. So, you can't wear it with the cotton shirts. Maybe you can wear it with the silk shirts because they are very thin and if you tuck, tuck it in, at least like on the front maybe, it's not going to be that visible inside the skirt. But, for example, cotton shirts, they are much thicker, they are much stiffer, so when you will tuck them in, everything is going to be visible. Then you can't wear it with chunky knit sweater, as we already saw. It either will be too long, you can't tuck it in, you can't create a better vertical proportion. And again, the material is too thick for such a thin skirt. And then we have to also think about the outwear, right? We can't just go outside in winter in one sweater or silk blouse. We need to think about coats and jackets. And if you wear a puffer jacket on a daily basis, you can't wear it with a thin skirt like that. It just looks, it's going to look silly. So what you can do is that you can either wear it with a shorter sweater, it can be chunky, like in this example, with a gray sweater. I think this outfit looks great. I also love that they put quite a chunky shoes as well. So the whole silhouette looks very harmonious. And again, vertically, you also have great proportions because we can clearly see that your torso, where it ends, and we can clearly see the legs and that they are long and your curves is just very beautifully made outfit. And the second option that you can wear the skirt with is a fine wool sweater, so maybe a merino wool. Even though these sweaters, they might not look very warm, but merino wool is actually one of the warmest wools out there. So don't be fooled by uh, the fine material. So it can be an option. So for example, if you had a skirt like this, maybe from a spring capsule or from an autumn capsule, and you want to include it in your winter capsule, you can do that if you have either cropped sweaters or fine wool sweaters and the right uh, the right outfit, right? So it doesn't look silly. <laughs> okay. Number four. I think that items that have two, three color patterns are not very versatile. So if you choose a pattern, it would be better to choose a pattern with more than three colors. And then you will have more possibilities to match that item with other stuff in your wardrobe. Okay, let's look at some examples. 
I have this beautiful shirt. I mean, it's beautiful. It has a nice pattern. Maybe it's not for everyone, but it's definitely a beautiful piece of clothing, right? But the problem is that it only has two colors. It has black and beige. So this means that if we want to find the perfect bottom, we can only use two colors, black or beige. Or maybe we can also add denim, yeah, because denim is quite versatile and we can squeeze it <laughs> mostly in any outfit. But that's it. So, for example, if you don't have beige, perfect beige trousers, this means you, can, you, you will be left with only black trousers or denim. Well, not so many, not that many possibilities. Here, for example, I try to add other colors just to show you an example, you know, and so we can see together if this pattern works or not. Because when you look at it just as a single item, you see these two colors, black and beige, and you think, oh, this is neutral. So maybe it will be quite versatile, but instead of being versatile, it's very limiting in the end, yeah? So you can't wear it with purple, you can't wear it with uh, green, or you can't wear it with navy. It just looks weird, <laughs> not, so, not, not so beautiful, yeah? Okay, now let's see an example with an item that has a lot of different colors and see if, what's the difference. So for example, this beautiful shirt, it has a lot of colors. I only put here three, but there are much more. Yeah, because I, I, can, only, I can also see navy, I can also see uh, orange and so many other colors. But I just wanted to show you an example. So we have these six colors. And this means that you can choose bottoms in these colors, in all the colors that you can see on this pattern. So here, I just quickly made some examples, just to show you how versatile this shirt is. It can go with black, it can go with beige, it can go with denim, with purple, green, with navy, and the list just goes on. This is a more versatile pattern. So basically, if you want your patterned items to be very wearable and uh, versatile, yeah, try to find those that have a lot of different colors. But also watch out that the pattern should be either cold or warm. Yeah, so there is not a lot of like mixed colors otherwise it also can limit your options so if you have an item with all the warm colors then it's great because all your warm buttons will probably look great with it the exception of this rule is white and black items that have white and black are very versatile especially if you have a lot of bottoms or tops <laughs> depending what your item what your black and white item is if you have a lot of monocolor uh, color uh, items yes yeah? so one color items so here for example there's a top that i recently found for one of my clients and i it was the most versatile item in the wardrobe because all other uh, all other bottoms were one color i'll show you looked like this and this means that the top just looked great with every single item from the wardrobe and this is great of course maybe some of these outfits will become my client's favorites and some uh, outfits will not her favorite but at least she has a lot of options to choose from yeah so this not uh, doesn't only apply for tops 
it can also apply for buttons. So if you have a black and white button, you can match it with any one color tops. It's going to be great. <laughs> okay. Now, number five, green color. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't think about this one. <laughs> So a green color is actually a pretty complicated color. Maybe one of the most complicated colors to match, especially when it comes to monochromatic outfits. Because when you put a lot of different shades, basically let's start actually with the understanding what this monochromatic outfit is. It's an outfit that has different shades of the same color. So it doesn't have to be uh, exactly the same shade of the same color, but it can be different shades by the same color, yeah? So when it comes to green, it gets very, very tricky because there are so many different shades of green. There are, uh, there are warm greens, there are cold greens, light, bright, dark, a lot <laughs> and they don't always go very well with each other so when you try to create a monochromatic outfits or basically when you want to include a few shades of green in your color palette of your wardrobe i would say limit yourself to just two two maximum two different shades of green that should go very well together. The rest of the elements of your outfit should be different color. So here, for example, we have the outfit that is not so great. And why is not so great? Because it has four different shades of green. It's just too distracting. They're just it, it just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. But the outfit on the left looks much better. It's much more pleasant to look at it. And that's because we don't have that many distracting shades of green. We only have two and we have neutral colors to support it. Plus the bag has more colors because it has a silk scarf tied into it. So there are some other colors, but they're not green. <laughs> so the rule is like this. When you want to add green color in your wardrobe, minimize it to two shades only. And these two shades should go very well with each other and with other clothes that you have. And here are some examples, some more examples. So as you can see, I only, uh, on this se second uh, outfit from the left, I have two shades of green and brown, the sandals and the pants, they have the same shade. And that's why it works pretty well. Nothing is disturbing the eye. It's very pleasant to look at it. The third outfit is very different. It has very bright kind of forest green, dark green, and it's much brighter than the olive green of pants. But it still works because the top is yellow, it's completely different. The sandals are black, completely different. So this bright green bag serves as a color accent here in this outfit. And the last outfit also has two shades of green and a yellow bag as a color accent. So this can be some options for using green in your wardrobe. Okay. Let me let me come back to you. <laughs> so
see some comments, see what you think. Let me, okay, let me uh, share the screen with, um, with you as well, so you can see the, the chat. Oh, just a second, there we go. <laughs> Should work, I hope, no? <laughs> Sorry, I have to look at another screen <laughs> to see your comments. I love greens, me too, me too. It's my favorite color, <laughs> but you have to be very careful with it. Just like stop yourself, on just two shades. Choose which ones are your favorite. For example, I love green and I wear green all the time. Every season I have, but I have different greens in my, uh, in my wardrobe. Yeah, in this wardrobe, I actually have dark green, forest green, and uh, this kind of green, like a more of a, dark uh, olive yeah and then it works but nothing else but in summer i would include like lime or apple green some more of a brighter and um, warmer shades and then it kind of it kind of works Here we have, I thought a two color print would be more mature looking and sophisticated. I mean, it's not about that. Yeah, it's of course, maybe in your uh, world view of beauty and fashion, it can look, it maybe look more sophisticated. Yeah, but it's just not so versatile. So today we don't talk about what is beautiful and what is not, but we talk about what is versatile and what is not so versatile. Yeah. So if you like the items, you can still wear them. You can still have them in your wardrobe. It's just, I want you to be aware of what your possibilities are. Yeah. So you know for sure what you get into when you buy items like this. Here, just two shades in a capsule or in an outfit or both. You ch choose only two shades per capsule, per capsule. All right. All right. While I'm still looking at your comments on my other computer, I'm like a, on a spaceship today. <laughs> I have so many different screens around me, but I can do it. I'll do it. You tell me what other items in your wardrobe you have that are not so versatile. Maybe you love them. I'm, I'm not here to judge you, yeah? But tell us if they're not versatile so we know. When we would shop, we will know that those items maybe are not our best, our best choices. Okay. Now, so here's the question for you. What garment do you avoid buying and why? I also asked uh, this question on Instagram the other day and I got a lot of interesting replies and I also included them, some of them here, because I absolutely agree that those items are not that versatile. And maybe they don't make that much sense. <laughs> Let's look at it, I love it. Okay, number six. 
Jumpsuits, super impractical, especially in winter, even though they are gorgeous. That's so true. <laughs> there are, of course, there are a lot of different designs for jumpsuits and uh, not all of them are so versatile. And also, as we have here in the comment that it's impractical and it's true. So I have in the picture here actually a, a different type of jumpsuit. It's kind of more casual design of a jumpsuit, yeah, kind of like a workwear jumpsuit. So I was thinking that when you have this kind of design, you can actually wear it with different t-shirts underneath, or it can be even a fine sweater. Yeah, you can add it for the warmth what you can edit as a color accent so you can play around with actually with this type of jumpsuit and then the problem the biggest problem about jumpsuit is that it's very uh, it's it's hard to go to restrooms <laughs> when you're wearing a jumpsuit right so with this type of jumpsuit where you have something underneath it doesn't kind of like it's not so revealing <laughs> when you it, it's not so cold <laughs> when you have to go to a restroom at least you have a t-shirt underneath so maybe maybe if you love jumpsuits maybe try to find something like this maybe not exact uh, the exact design like here maybe it can be a little bit more feminine if you wish but i like the idea of putting something underneath and have some kind of t-shirt there at least and I love that you can play with color there and it's close to your face you can also add uh, some shine to your face with different colors so maybe this jumpsuit actually on the photo is not the worst <laughs> jumpsuit out there okay another suggestion that I got on Instagram from you <laughs> was this embellished garments so as i understood is that embellished means you have some kind of jewelry maybe already sewn into the garment and i would say yeah it's not very versatile kind of situation and it's not versatile it's not very it's not that it's not versatile it's maybe not very functional yeah because you can't wear this kind of items on a daily basis it's more of a dress up kind of items and maybe you wear it once or twice per season maybe or maybe in half a year with our times with uh, covid and everything you know but yeah i kind of agree that this kind of garments are not very versatile unless you love when something is uh shining there <laughs> yeah if you love uh, some stuff like that but it can also it doesn't have to be like stones i would say that uh, sometimes you can find items that have buttons that also made out of stones or some other um, items with like a lot of different pearls or something like this and it's it's a lot it's a lot you can't wear it uh, very often and if you have a capsule wardrobe you need to wear your items not very often but at least a few times per month so you need an occasion for this kind of items okay and uh, another suggestion that came from you from my instagram was leather t-shirts and leather dresses <laughs> okay well, here i would have to agree that a leather t-shirt is a weird weird fashion item yeah you it's kind of it doesn't keep you warm maybe even the opposite then the short sleeve where are you going to go with a short sleeve in winter it's kind of too cold in summer it's too hot basically why do why do we even have leather t-shirts <laughs> that's such a weird thing to have 
So not very versatile, not very functional again, yeah? And the leather dresses here, I am kind of like, I don't know, this is something, um, it, it can be functional if you love to wear leather on a daily basis. It can be an option, but of course, again, you can't really, um, I mean, it depends. Yeah, leather dresses is not, I'm not so sure. I mean, it can be, again. But with the dresses, with any dress, no matter what it's made out of, I would say that it, those are not very versatile items. But they are very easy to wear. They're very easy, um, uh, very easy to wear. It means that basically you don't have to think a lot about what to wear, how to style it. So I'm not against of dresses yeah i have dresses in my wardrobe and i definitely love them even though of course i can't wear them in a very different way the maximum that we can do is to change the shoes and change the bag but the rest is kind of always stays the same so i'd say the biggest advice when choosing dresses to look not at versatility of different ways to wear that dress but to look if you love it or not. If you love it, if you feel like, yes, I have a lot of opportunities to wear that dress, I will, I can wear it to work, I can wear it uh, to meet my friends, I can wear it to a party, so you have a lot of opportunities to wear it, then it's a good dress. Okay, let's continue. I have two more items that I would love to to talk about high waisted plus front pleats, trousers, or skirts. So, here I have an example of a skirt like this. So, what I mean is high waisted is really, really high, like this. And I think for summer, spring, this type of skirts and trousers they can work they can be very versatile but for winter not so much because in winter you can't wear it with a chunky sweater because you have a lot of volume around your waistline you have pleats you have a belt you have a piece of fabric coming out yeah because the of the super high waist design so you can't wear a chunky sweater you can't tuck it in you can't wear it untucked straight and wide tops might uh, also look too voluminous so you will create a very kind of like a round silhouette which is not so great Cardigans also very hard to find a cardigan to wear with this kind of items because again you can't wear a cropped cardigan it's going to look a little bit silly because your torso is just going to be like this <laughs> yeah and very uh, long cardigan again will create a lot of volume here around the waistline and around your bottom so i would say not so versatile and then v-neck tops also not so good with high-waisted items like this because when you have a v-neck it means visually visually your torso starts right here and then it ends right here so you have just like this much to show off your torso so it's just going to be a breast and that's it so if you have items like this in your winter wardrobe, I would say you can only wear them with very tight and thin tops. Basically like we can see on these pictures. Or we can try it also with straight tops, but very careful, yeah, because it can create more volume around here. So you can try, but you have to be careful. 
But for summer, again, see, it's going to work because in summer we have very thin tops, mostly, t-shirts and stuff like that. You can actually have a lot of different outfits if you have a lot of thin and uh, uh, tight tops. Okay, and the last item that I wanted to show you is a winter dress with a long asymmetrical skirt. So here on the picture, I have a dress. It's beautiful, like a gorgeous dress with amazing belt. <laughs> I love it, but it's just not so great because as you can see, the front skirt is much shorter and on the back, the skirt goes very long. Here I have a better picture, so you can see the difference. On the back, the skirt is so much longer. And why it's not so good? Because if you have a coat, if you wear it with a coat, which is probably the best to wear your dresses with, it will not look that great. Look, so, the pink rectangular means a coat, <laughs> so you understand, yeah? So if you have a knee length coat, you have a lot of skirts left. So what does it do visually? Again, it disturbs your vertical proportions. Your torso looks very long and your legs are basically almost non-existent <laughs> yeah because there is a little bit of skirt which is like very flowy we can't see a leg it's all messy mess in the end and then if you have a coat that is much longer like a midi coat it's still even if it will cover the front skirt the you're going to have a lot of fabric on the back and it's again it's going to just look super weird proportionally in like a vertical proportion yeah so this is not good but this is a perfect dress to wear in summer it's beautiful why not if you love asymmetrical skirts i i would say it's beautiful option it's just when you need to wear it with a coat, it's not going to be very easy. <laughs> it's not going to be very easy. All right, so this is what I wanted to show you today. Then items that I think are not so versatile for a winter capsule wardrobe. I hope you have learned something new today. And um, of course, the of a perfect outfit is it's not only about versatility but we also have to consider color matching we have to consider our proportions our uh, what kind of lengths of items we choose to put together and another one is a silhouette the outfit silhouette is basically when you put clothes together on an outfit, the clothes create a specific silhouette. There are different types of silhouette. We have nine different types of silhouette. There are like skinny silhouette, straight silhouette, wide ones. So a lot of different and then a lot of combinations of that. So this is also very important. And if you haven't yet seen our free video lesson from Wonder Wardrobe course, I would invite you to do it right after our Q&A is over because you will learn how to, another ways to create well-balanced outfits. It's completely free. You don't have to do anything. You just have to go press this link that I will put in the description of this video after we are done and you can watch it for free. I hope you enjoy and also will learn something, something new. All right.
now i welcome <laughs> your questions if you have more questions or you want to ask about other items maybe uh, i forgot something i don't know uh, let's chat we have a little bit um, more time left so i would love to see some of your questions i would have to look this way <laughs> to see your uh, chat and let's see let's see oh you love it <laughs> thank you so much thank you for everyone that is saying that they they liked uh, this uh, little lesson and if you did please uh, you can press like I think this will help other people to find this video on YouTube and uh, also it will be great if you can share this video with a friend when we are done. Okay. I am sick of cropped pants being in style. I'm cold and want a full length pant leg in natural fibers only. <laughs> yes, that's in an ideal world. <laughs> but there are so many different uh, pants that you can find that are long. I don't think that there is a, such a thing as a trend that, yeah, as a like cropped pant trend is just one of the designs of pants we don't have that many designs for pants maybe we only have like eight different pant designs and one of them is a cropped pant yeah so it's one of the many so you can choose you can choose you don't have to go with a trend there are pants like that i saw them <laughs> okay do you have any questions what about velvet skirts? Mm. Velvet skirts, it, you know, it's not that much about the material of the skirt, but about the shape and also the thickness of material. Yeah, so if your velvet skirt is very very thin then for winter it's not going to work it's the same example as i showed you with the satin skirt yeah so it's because it's just so thin you it's very it's going to be very hard to match it with the thicker fabrics like wool sweaters or something like this but i can't say that the standard velvet skirt is not versatile. I would say it's pretty versatile. I remember one, uh, one video I made a few years ago, maybe three years ago with the uh, brand J Jackman. And uh, she had in her collection a velvet skirt. And I think she even was wearing one in that video, the founder of the brand. Check it out because I thought it was pretty cool. She had a black velvet skirt, knee length, straight cut, and she was wearing it with a leopard printed um, turtleneck. I thought that was so unusual, it's such an interesting combination, and it worked. She looked amazing. So I can't say that velvet skirts are not very versatile. Pretty good. It would be good to know the different pant designs. It helps me be sure to have the variety in my capsule to keep me from getting bored with the same silhouette. Yeah, we have in our Wonder Wardrobe course in the Body Harmony class, we have a lesson about pants <laughs> and uh, all types of pants and what you can choose depending on your on the shape size 
and uh, uh, what else? The shape, the size of your uh, curves, uh, yeah, of your hips. Yeah, so you first you find out what kind of hips you have, and then you have all the different types of bands that you should try and uh, what kind of different de design details you need to look at, uh, like where the darts should be, how many darts uh, you need to choose on your pants and uh, other, other things like that. And we also have for skirts and for dresses and for blazers and for shorts, basically <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Is the rule of only two of the same color green applicable to any other colors? No, I think it only um, it only concerns green. Green is the most complicated. Yeah, the rest, like a blue, you can definitely match a lot of different blues and uh, you're still going to look nice. The same with pink. The same with yellow, the same, yeah. Most of the colors are much, much easier, but green is a tricky one, it's a tricky one. <laughs> okay, do we have more questions? Cropped sweaters. Question mark. <laughs> ah, here I see. What about suede dresses? I have one in tan and it goes over and underneath many things. Yeah, that's great. And it's again, you know, it doesn't matter what the dress is made out of. As long as you can wear it in different ways. Yeah, because maybe... Um, And also the important part is the color, right? Because tan color is very versatile. Basically, you probably mean like camel, yeah? And it's uh, one of the most versatile colors out there. So if you have a dress that you can wear with the different tops on top or underneath, and it's a versatile color, you have a very, very, very good dress. <laughs> But if your dress has a complicated color, you can't wear it with anything else, and you don't love it, then it's not a good dress. But if you love it, it's still a good dress. <laughs> I hope you understand what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to ban dresses. That's, <laughs> I guess that's my point. Shirts without sleeves. <laughs> For winter is definitely a very weird option. But for summer, if you live in a very hot climate, I think it's uh, a very good option because it's not too hot, but it still looks kind of put together. And maybe even sometimes it can look professional depending on that fabric or design and I also love that you when you eat, uh, when you live in a very hot climate you can also wear sleeveless shirt and uh, wear a light blazer on top yeah because sometimes you just have to look professional or more formal and that's the best top uh, to go with the blazer How to wear gold pants <laughs> with the best, the easiest way to wear gold pants is with neutral colors. So it can be black, dark gray, navy, dark brown. 
I can say that because I have a pair of gold pants <laughs> and this is how I wear it but I also wear it with a uh, blue shirt I also wear it with striped t-shirts and stuff like that so maybe they are not the most versatile items but you still can have a lot of options if you want to see how I wear my gold pants <laughs> you should um, go to my uh, youtube channel and scroll down 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 to like year 2017 or something i showed my first uh, capsule wardrobe there it's a summer capsule wardrobe and i have my gold pants there and i showed you how i i, I wear it just for some inspiration How to style white fleecy tights. <laughs> okay, someone bought me them as a gift and I have no idea what to wear them with. White tights. What are yours? Six? <laughs> oh, it's so funny. Yeah, actually it was one of the suggestions also from uh, my Instagram. It was tights, colored tights that those are not very versatile especially when they are very have a very weird color like white yellow blue red what do you wear it with like it's maybe you have one outfit to wear such tights but really um it's not very versatile or something with pattern like a leopard tights or something like this it's quite it's quite complicated to create a lot of different outfits for that. Maybe you have one. I actually have a video also on my channel about styling socks and tights in winter. And I talk about styling different colors. Also, maybe you should check. I, I don't think I have white, but maybe you get some ideas. I talk about black. I talk about gray, navy, bright colors tights with patterns, how to wear them, how to style them. I'm sure you'll find some ideas. Nice. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Gold pants, they lose. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so I think that's it for today and thank you all for joining. I hope you've learned something new today and if you did, please share this video with a friend. I'm sure they will also like it. It's going to be, as I said in the beginning, it's going to be a wow December for those of you that will join our three events in the upcoming weeks. I will be announcing all the three events on my Instagram, so please follow me there and also in the newsletter. And the event that is specifically for students, I will also announce it on Slack, so please keep an eye on it. Okay, thank you so much for joining. It was it was fun. It was fun today. Thank you so much. You have a great weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.